Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is Vicious. I hope you can say you're doing well, and if not, at least by the end of this video, say that you're well informed. So it is late night on Friday, and I'm up trying to give you guys your weekly dosage of something new to learn. And uh, so before I turn in for the night, we're doing a installation of Pi-hole on Ubuntu 1804. Now I did search for this ahead of time, and there are a couple of written articles on there. Um, but no one has done a video on it yet. So Pi-hole, if you haven't heard of it before, it came out as a, a focused installation for the Raspberry Pi as a DNS server. And not just any DNS server, it's specifically uh, made to try to block ads. That was their selling point. They have a lot of community-driven blacklisting for DNS uh, ranges, and it blocks all those ads for you. Unfortunately, I'll throw this out there up front, no matter how much you would like it to do, YouTube ad blocking, it doesn't work. If you want to do that, you're going to have to put it in a, um, an ad block in your browser. And yet, actually, you can do it through DNS blacklisting, but there's so many bad things that happen that it's not worth trying, and YouTube will change their stuff and get around it anyways. So, but Pi-hole is still a really good DNS server. So if you're one of those people out there who likes to tinker and have fun, or you have the, the, the router that your ISP gave you that just sucks and you want to do something better, then this is great. Now, if you're an enthusiast and you're already running, a, like, say, PF Blocker NG on your PF Sense, then no, this isn't really better than that. It's just an alternative to it. But it's cool. It's something that was made to run on the Raspberry Pi, but over time it has adapted, and they now make it so that you can install it on multiple operating systems. However, the reason we're doing this tutorial today is if you go to look at the operating system list, you'll see, you know, like the Raspberry N and Fedora and Docker and then Ubuntu. But if we click on supported operating systems, you'll see that Ubuntu 16.04 and 16.10, and we're, we're now at the 18 series. So I have Ubuntu Server 18.04 installed as a new virtual machine and it's not supported. And if you actually just try to follow the installation instructions given to you from Pi-hole, it will not work. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't work if you know what to do. So that's what we're going over in this tutorial. Uh, a little bit more information, the reason I like Pi-hole, besides the fact that it's just, you know, it's free and it's cool, I really love the interface. Uh, it gives you this really cool administrative interface with all these pretty colors and charts, and it shows you how much stuff is getting blocked, and you can look into what's being searched for. It's just a really cool tool to have if you're interested in a little bit more insight on what's going on in your network. So backstory aside, let's get into the tutorial on how to install it. So like I said, this is a brand new Ubuntu 18.04 server instance, which means we have no graphic interface, it's just strictly command line driven interface. That's what I recommend you use, by the way, because you don't need any kind of graphic interface with this program. We'll use PuTTY and we'll go straight in to an SSH session on that uh, server. And 192.168.1.232. And this is strictly for the demonstration. I'll delete this virtual machine after the fact since I do use PFSense. All right, now to save you a little bit of time, I've done one thing and only one thing ahead of time, which was update my repositories, but I'll show you what you need to do. So we just assume a fresh install at this point. We wanna do a sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. So we'll see if there's anything new real quick. Probably not, or if anything, it's minor. But this took a few minutes the first time I did it, so that's why I went ahead and took care of that ahead of time for you guys. So we'll let that run through. Let's clear the screen. We're at a fresh install now. So here's the thing. I'll tell you the problem first. The problem is 
Ubuntu 1804 has removed a couple of the default packages that PyHole needs as a dependency. PyHole is not capable of installing those dependencies because on the original Ubuntu 1804 install, it didn't have the proper repository to download and install those dependencies. So what we wanna do, let's go ahead and we're gonna to go to um, the Etsy APT, and there's a thing in here called sources.list. The first thing you might wanna do is actually create a copy of it. So if you do a CP for copy and sources.list, and then you can do a, a new name, which you can see I've already done here. I have, uh, actually I don't have the, so let's do a sources.list.old or backup. There we go. And I'll make sure that we're going to the current directory. All right. And we need to sudo that. Now we have the original and we have our backup. Just something extra to do for a little bit of safety. Now we'll go ahead and uh, sudo nano. Nano is built in here and we'll do the sources list and we can see all of our repositories. So you have the Bionic repository main. And I think before we did the update, Universe was missing, but Universe is what we need to add. So if for some reason you do not have Universe as a repository, you need to add it in. As you can see, I have the, uh, the main Universe right here, appended, and we're ready to rock and roll. So add one of these lines of the universe repository if necessary. But according to my clean install, I didn't have to add anything other than just doing an update. So the next thing we're gonna do then is go ahead and install the packages that PyHole needs to actually work. So that's gonna be a sudo apt get no install All right, so we're installing Dialog and DHCPCD5. And those are the two packages that are missing in the new version of Ubuntu. Now with that done, we can actually follow the, the install instructions given to us by PyHole. Now there's more than one way to install it. This is the easiest way. It's just straight up that one line. If you go to the install instructions, they give you other options here if you prefer to do something different, but we'll just follow the easy instructions. And that's gonna be a curl SSL HTTPS install.py-hole.net pipe that over to bash. And I must type something, let's see here. There we go. Member case matters in Linux, so be sure to get your uppercases and your lowercases correct. Now we'll walk through the installer. It's telling you we're going to in turn this device into a network-wide ad blocker. Ask you to donate. It's telling you need a static IP address for this to function properly, and I'll go over that in just a second. Which upstream DNS, so you have who this DNS server is gonna go up to if it doesn't know the answer. Google is my favorite. Feel free to choose a different one if you'd like. And here's the public black listing that it comes preset with. So you can use the space bar to select or deselect them. Obviously, probably best thing to do is keep all of those selected and you can add more after we get done installing. Uh, tab key to get down to the okay. Do we want to block on IPv4 and IPv6? Yes, we do, even though I do not use IPv6 on my network. Here's the current static IP settings, and okay, okay. Web interface, definitely, we need that. And do we want to use the, yep, we want that. Do we want that? Yes. Everything, yes. And let that finish up. All right.
right, this will keep running through. So again, we're using a virtual machine here for the purposes of making it really easy to stand up a machine and demonstrate, but this works on a bare metal install, of course, if this is something you want to install. All right. Now overall, it's a fairly fast install. I didn't give this VM very many resources at all. Uh, now here we go. Important thing, your admin web page login password is, if you do not pay attention here, you will not see that and lose it. So let me show you what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and not remember that password. We're done, it's installed right now. So if we go to our browser and we go to that VM, which is HTTP colon slash slash 192. You wanna to go to admin is the page. And that should pull up our pretty awesome Pi-hole interface. And you can see we get the dashboard, we get some basic statistics, but we can't control anything until we log in. And it's gonna ask you not for a username, but just for your password, which is what was just given to us a moment ago. And for this particular example, I wanna show you what happens if you didn't see it or if you forgot it. Here's what you wanna do. Go back to your SSH session and type in sudo pihole-a-p. And now you get to enter a new password. So I'll put in an easy password. All right, now that I've put in a new password, I can log into this administrative interface. And now we get the full blown experience of Pi-hole. So many, many, many things in here. Now this video is not gonna go into depth on how to configure everything like your blacklist and your regular expressions and that if you, if you guys want that, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to make an extra video that goes into more detail on actually using Pi-hole. But I wanted to get you to this point. It's up and running. And I also want to cover a couple of other important things because the video is specific to Ubuntu 18.04. So let's go back to our 18.04 session. If you do not have a static IP address, like you didn't set it up during the installation of your OS, this is how you do it. So under the Etsy APT, we're gonna back up one more from here. It's under Etsy and then NetPlan. So this is a brand new thing from for Ubuntu 18.04 is this NetPlan. And the way it's configured, this is instead of the old network interfaces com configuration, you have a file called 50-cloud you go into uh, edit this, we'll go sudo nano 50 cloud yaml. This is where your network configuration comes in. So network, ethernet, the actual ethernet device, the addresses, so here's our static IP. I am not using DHCP, my default gateway, my DNS upstream server. And this is where you would set that up. Now here is something I love to hate about YAML. YAML is space sensitive. So if you do not have the proper number of spaces or if you don't have a space character but instead have a tab character, it will not parse this file and it will not work. So everything here has to be lined up properly by spaces and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So be very careful about your spaces when you're editing a YAML file. The other thing, just for extra, I like to throw extra. I found this out the hard way. So I have two VLANs on my network right now. I have a standard VLAN with most of my IoT devices and a 1500 MTU, but I also have a server VLAN running on a 10 gigabit network and it uses a 9000 MTU, also known as jumbo frames. And 1804 has a bug in it that if you set the MTU, and that net plan file, it does not actually work unless you match it to the 
MAC address. So I just want to show you, show you the, the syntax of that. So that's under my Ubuntu um, transmission server. So let's open up a new session to that server. All right, so here we go. The command is simply MTU, and I put a 9000 MTU in here. But like I said, this did not work at all until I did the match, and I matched it to the MAC address of my interface. So that was important if you guys are ever going to run jumbo frames. So just a little extra information there. So in the sake of keeping this video kind of short and to the point of what we were targeting, which is installing PyHole on Ubuntu 18.04, we've got that covered. If there's anything else you guys want me to kind of grow upon on this video, then let me know down in the comments. I'll keep this VM up and ready to be further taken to the next level as far as explanations, configurations, and use. Uh, and also, let me go ahead and do this real quick too. This is all, you know, from the hip. I'm not recording this ahead of time and I'm not rehearsing it, but make sure that once you stand up your pie hole, if you intend to actually use it, you need to go into your computer and change your preferred DNS server to the IP address of your pie hole. You can either do that statically from each computer like this, or go into your DNS server and change the name server to the new IP address so that when each one of your computers and devices pulls its new DHCP information, it automatically starts talking to your pie hole and you'll get that great DNS service and that blacklisting of those ad domains. So once again, this was Vicious. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like it, subscribe it, comment on it, whatever you feel like doing. And I look forward to talking to you next time.